Travel lovers rejoice. Kanye Nash travelers. I like music for this. I know the great music, right? <laughs> yeah. It's sort of like islandy, <laughs> yes, yes, like giving you the I'm vibe, there, there. right? So this is going to be the best segment you're going to see all morning long here at <laughs> CBS News. Uh, Kanye Nash travelers annual hot list is here, and we have an exclusive first look at the diverse range of hotels, restaurants, and cruises that made the cut. To tell us more about some of the favorites, the executive editor of Condé Nast Traveler, Aaron Florio, is joining us here live in Studio 57. Good to see you. Good to see you guys. All right, so let's get into it. Uh, I want to know, because I'm a big hotel guy. My wife is an oh, Airbnb oh guy. She's, she's an Airbnb-like person. I forgot what you said to me. You said something like, you know, I require a certain, <laughs> a certain I'm not a snob. amount of accoutrement. What? You said something Frenchy. Yeah. Well, I'm not a snob, <laughs> no, not. but I require a certain level of comfort <laughs> when I said. travel. So where are the best places to stay this <laughs> well, year? You're, yeah, you're with you're with the right company uh, <laughs> on that one. Um, so yes, it's very exciting. Today our annual hot list comes out. Uh, you know, this is the list of the top hotels, restaurants, and cruises. The hotels are really the heart of the list. Um, and, you know, we, we just, we've put together this amazing list that we joke every year, you know, we put out the hot list today, tomorrow we start our next year's list. So it's an always on thing that we're doing. We're scouring those hotels, keeping on top of what's opening up. And then of course we're going, we're reviewing, we're having so many conversations about what's gonna make a hotel really, really great. Mm. Um, you know, there's a few highlights okay. this year. I've meant, I, I heard you guys mention Jamaica before. Yeah. I have to say, unfortunately, it did not make the list this year. Mm. It's always next year. Okay. Um, but, you know, we have some great hotels from, you know, right here in New York City. I think one of the most exciting hotels to open up is the Fifth Avenue Hotel. Mm. Don't know if you've been. Recommend yeah. it for a staycation. I stayed there once. It was fantastic. Really whimsical, really fun, like a riot of color. Oh, wow. um, and then, you know, we've got some amazing places offshore too. Boutique places like in uh, Marrakesh. There's a place called Fresha Farmhouse, which is stunning. So of the, of the destination. What is that called? Frasha Farmhouse. Frasha Farmhouse. Yeah. Okay, yeah, there nice. it is. Frasha Farmhouse. Oh, Majorca. Yes. Okay. So Ma let's talk about Majorca. Yeah. That's like, you know, we know it's it's always on the list. Right. Yeah. So why did it jump out to you this year? Okay, I do have to say, Majorca is one of those places that everybody is talking about yeah, right yeah, now. It is yeah. so hot right now. You have to go. What I love about the hotel we've included this year, which is a hotel called Corazon, is that um, not only is it so chic and stylish and boutique, it's from this fashion photographer named Kate Bellum, and it really feels like you're staying at like the creative house of like this great creative set of people, mm. but it's really affordable. And one thing I really want to make a point of is that a luxury hotel does not mean it's going to break the bank always. So for your wife who might prefer Airbnb, there are some alternatives that you, you, know, you can stay in these amazing places and still make it feel accessible to a lot of people. Right. Okay. okay. And one, one more that was on the list for Hawaii. Hawaii. Uh, Hawaii's a fan favorite. We like, I like the Andaz in, in Maui, mm -hmm. but you've got some, a place I don't know. Uh, yes, so we actually have what's a, a reborn hotel, uh, the Kona Village on the Big Island. Kona Rosewood Village. has taken it over. It is incredible. They've brought in this amazing designer named Nicole Hollis, who's based in San Francisco. You know, she's really done a great job of the place. She's gotten rid of that whole sort of Hawaiian flora hotel kitsch, which, right. you know, frankly, we could say goodbye to. Yeah, sure. And she's really made it very earthy, really honor the local environment. I love it. And this place is amazing. Like, I, I have to say, it probably has the best hotel bar anywhere in the world. Right. It's an old ship that sort of ran aground on the shore, and they've just they've left it in the spot, and they've sort of converted it into a hotel bar. That's so you sit so there cool. outside, you can see the volcano. It's total, total magic. Uh, can we talk about cruises? Because I think, I feel yeah. like cruises are, like, they've made a comeback. You've got that massive ship that was, you know, just set sail, yeah, and then that crazy that. cruise that everyone was on TikTok. Yeah. Uh, you know, they were going down, they're like, uh, the 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 Arctic, not the Arctic, but uh, Antarctica, they're, right? So people to, are talking about cruises. Absolutely, I, yeah. and I think cruises is actually one of the most exciting parts of the industry. Really? I do because it's evolving so much. Okay. I mean, really, the, re the the industry is really giving us reason to sort of you know dispel those misconceptions or those preconceptions we might have have of cruising. Yeah. Because what I love about cruises is that they can take you to these places that really are inaccessible otherwise. So we've got a great. Many, many, many great ships on the list, but one of the ones I'm most excited about is Seaborne Pursuit. Mm -hmm. um, it's sailing this area of Australia called the Kimberley, which is really wild, very, very hard to reach, and kind of the only way you can explore it is if you've got a ship to take mm -hmm. you there. So, you know, cruising is a great but, option. Um, really quickly, dining? 
Yes. Okay. So the part of the list that I might secretly be most excited about this year is the restaurant list. It is the biggest restaurant list we've ever had. Of course, we've eaten at all these restaurants, and we've eaten at many others that didn't make the list. Oh. Importantly, um, a few highlights. Are you looking include... for volunteers for next year's list. <laughs> Absolutely. I will sign you up. Um, a few highlights include this great place in Miami called Maddie's. It's bright. It's cheerful. I had a colleague go down there. He was texting me while he was eating there, saying this has to be on the list. And then, you know, finally, I do want to mention. Um, I don't know if you guys have been there. If you've not been there, you've seen it all over Instagram. Coca Dot. Coca Dot. Yeah, you know, everybody's talking like, about what it. What I love everybody's is that it, talking it just made dining yet. fun. You know, it makes dining fun again. Sometimes we take fine dining a little too seriously, and this is champagne, chicken nuggets. You're dancing on the tables at 7:30 at night, and it just makes things. It's, fun. it's on the list for oh, us wow. too. Yeah. Oh, that uh, sounds like fun. Yes, Erin. Uh, Erin, uh, thank you so much. That was great. It's always great having you. Thank you.